Hello and welcome to another video for our React Starter. Today we're going to be looking at a tool that helps us build out React applications. And this comes straight from Facebook, straight from the React team. It's called Create React App. And you can think of Create React App as the React CLI, the command line interface tool that we're going to use to build out React applications. Now let's talk about what comes in Create React App. What do we get out of this tool? We get a recommended folder structure. And before we had this tool, there was a lot of different kinds of setups and a lot of different ways that people would set up their uh, React applications. So it felt like the Wild West. But now that Create React App CRA is out, uh, we have a recommended folder structure and a lot of people have been creating their applications like this. We have a build setup. Before Create React Application, we would have to set up our own Webpack setup have our Babel for our transpiling ES6 down to ES5 code so that all browsers could understand it. Now we have a build setup that is directly given to us and we don't have to worry about Webpack or any of that stuff. And we can worry about just building out our React applications. Scripts to run things, this is very helpful. So we have things to run for development and we run one command and we are able to develop our React applications right in the browser. We have ability to provide production bundles. So we'll talk about this and we'll kind of walk through how the Create React app works. But this is actually really big because we can run one command and then we have all the files needed to send our React applications to our browser so that users can use it on the web. We have the ability to run our tests with Create React app and we have extensibility. We can add in SAS, we can add in TypeScript and all these fun things pretty quickly. So let's go look at the website real quick. This is Create React App. And it is a very, very helpful website if you want to kind of get started and look through the docs. What we're basically going to do today is just do a quick run through of pretty much all of this stuff right here. So let's go over to our command line. And right now I'm using Hyper. I'm on Windows. I'm using the Windows subsystem for Linux. So this is a, a Linux kind of setup. I can LS. You can see all of my projects here. I can clear. And uh, I just named my folder Batcave. This is where I put most of my work just because I think it's a little fun. To get us started with Create React App, we just have to run one single command. Nowadays, if you're using a modern version of Node, I think we're on Node version 12 now. If you're using anything past like eight, I believe you get the npx command. And npx is a basically a way to go grab a package without having to install it locally. Now, before this, we would have to go npm install global uh, create react app. Uh, we no longer have to do that. We can just do npx create react app. Uh, and we're going to call this one super duper app. You see, I've already done it. And we'll press enter. So this is actually going to say npx, go grab create react app in its current version, and then pull down create react app, create an app called super duper app. So we'll press enter, we'll let this run. All right, we've been able to get Create React App to run and build out an application for us. Let's take a look at what it can do. We have all of these different things that are added for us. These are our dependencies. We don't have to worry about them. What really matters is success created super duper app at, this is my folder structure, documents, Batcave, super duper app. Inside of that directory, you can run several commands. We have yarn start. And notice that they're using yarn. You can use npm or yarn. We have yarn start, which is the development server. We have yarn build, which gives us static files for production. This is kind of the stuff that you will use to host your website on the web. We have a yarn test. We can run our test runner and yarn eject. Now we're going to do start, build, and test real quick, but we're not going to talk about eject too much. This is something that you only should do if you are very confident that you know what the Webpack setup looks like. This is for anyone that thinks that the Create React App setup isn't good enough for their application. If you need something more advanced, this is what you do. You yarn eject, and then you have access to all of the different config files for Webpack so that you can customize it for your application. One thing to note is that if you do eject, you can't come back to the non-ejected version. And the benefit of never ejecting is that we can update Create React App uh, as the Facebook team updates it, we can just update our NPM packages and everything works as it should. With Yarn Eject, you don't really get that uh, benefit, that promise that as you update, things will keep working. 
So we suggest that you begin by typing CD super duper app. So we're going to go into that folder and let me CD super duper app. And let's clear this out. We can actually hit yarn start and start our development server. I won't do that just yet. I'll kind of want to see what the folder structure is real quick. So we're going to go code. We're going to open up this folder in code. VS code here. Let me zoom in real quick. Let's talk about this folder structure. We have our git ignore, which is your default git ignore node modules. Let's zoom out here. Coverage. Very good. We have our package.json. We're going to come right back to this, but let's look at dependencies. We have React, React DOM at 16.8.6 right now. And we have React scripts, which is what the Create React app needs to run all of these scripts. And you can see here we have scripts. We have the ability to start, which is for development. We have a build script, which is building for production. We have testing and we have ejecting. And these are the only four things that Create React app kind of brings for us. We also have browserless, so we can say, hey, when I'm in development, I only want to support one Chrome version, one Firefox version, one Safari version. And this is kind of how Create React app uses uh, browsers list to kind of compile all of our code down for certain browsers. The readme is just the default readme. Yarn.lock is kind of all of our packages. Let's close all these out. Public is where all of the assets that we're going to deliver to our application is going to live, like index.html. Usually you won't be working inside of this public folder much. Most of this stuff is just kind of static. It's going to live here and then will get used in your final bundle, but you won't be working in here. And let's take a look. This is kind of all the starting point for your Create React app. If we go down here, we have our title React app. You can change that here. And notice that all we have here is a div ID of root. Now, when React starts up, it's basically going to take over this root div and all of your React code, all your React components will work in here. And it'll basically just be a single page application. It'll take over the entire thing and that'll be awesome. Now, where are the uh, actual React components? It's not in public folder, it's in the source folder. And if you look, the main thing that starts us off is this index.js. And right here, React DOM render our app, and we're going to render it right in that div ID root that we saw earlier. So by doing this, React is saying, I'm taking over that div, and we're going to make that entire thing your React app. All right, we also have a service worker. Uh, you can jump into that file and see exactly what it does. It helps with caching, all that good stuff. But where we really want to look is this app for our app component. Let's zoom in a little bit. Let's go into app right here, app.js. And this is kind of the starting point for our React app. We have a logo, we have app.css, and then we just have a quick class name app. We have an app header right here with a logo, a paragraph, and an A tag. And that's it. That's all that Create React app creates for us, just a very bare bones app component. So if we come back over here, we can see app.test. It renders without crashing, and basically it creates a div and wants to render the app component and make sure that it doesn't crash. We have index.css with just some base CSS here, and we have our logo. So that's kind of the base for Create React app. It's just going to say, hey, I want to give you an app component. I want to render it for you so that you can run this application yourself and go ahead and go from there. All right, now that we've done that, let's close all these out. Let's give it a shot. I'm opening up the VS Code terminal. You can do this from uh, Hyper or whatever terminal you're using. I'm just going to do it right in VS Code since it's convenient. We can do npm run. There's actually a few ways to start this. You can do npm start. Uh, you can also do npm run start. Or if you are using yarn, you can do yarn start. And notice it runs React script start. We're going to come back into Chrome. It'll run this in Chrome for us. Let's refresh that. And this is what we get. We have our logo, which is animated. We have edit source app.js to save to reload. And this goes to the docs. Let's go back to our VS code. Close that out. Let's open up app.js. And let's say edit. Let's change this to hello, I'm here. And as soon as I click save, Create React app automatically handles the live reload for us. So I save, come back over. Hello, I'm here is already there. So you get a lot out of the box with Create React app. 
very helpful. Now let's come back over here. We're going to close this out. Let's open up this again. We're going to close that. Let's run the production command, yarn production. And if you wanted to use NPM, you could do NPM run production. If it's not the start script, you have to write NPM run. And let's do NPM run, let's do yarn production. I've been using yarn for everything. Oh, sorry, it's yarn build. What a mess. So it's NPM run build, or it's yarn build. Not production, come on, Chris. All right, now it's running our production build. And let's see exactly what this does for us. Okay, so now it created a couple different files. Let me scroll down here. It created a chunk.js, a main.js, a main.chunk.js, and a main.chunk.css. And notice that the bulk of the work here is in this number two dot chunk.js. So let's go take a look. And we're gonna put this all in the, the build folder is ready to be deployed. So let's go over here, open up our folder, look at this build folder, and everything that we need is inside of this build folder. And if we look at this index.html, notice that it's minified so that we can give the smallest amount of code to our users. But notice that instead of just having a base index.html, it's actually create react app has injected our CSS file right here. It has injected our JavaScript code right here and right here. So we have main, we have two dot chunk.js right here. And if you're wondering what these letters are, these are cache busting so that uh, when we deploy our application to the server again, it says, oh, this is a different file and we need to uh, reload it. We have to go grab it again and we can't use the one that's in cache because the browsers will try to cache this. And every time you deploy your application, you want to make sure that your users are getting the latest code. Now we have this right here. Let's go look at what these files actually do. And they are under static CSS. This is our CSS, which is the same as the, let's go look, source app.css, all this stuff right here ends up making it into our final bundle right here. Yeah, we have app header, app logo, app link, all that good stuff. Now let's look at JS. We have two.chunk.js, and this is actually a really, really long file, but this is all the stuff that we need for our React application. Let's look at main.chunk.js. This is going to be where we are going to create the app component. And notice you can see, well, if I try to read through this, uh, notice that it actually takes our app component, app.js, right here, it creates an app, it creates a header, it creates an image, right? If we come back here to main, you can see that we have, where are, yep, create element image, create element div, create element header right here. So this is kind of what Babel and Webpack does for our applications. It takes all this nicely generated code and turns it into something that the browsers can read and generate our final application. So that's kind of how we bundle for production. We use yarn build. Let's go over here. It creates all of our files for us and creates this basically index.html. So when we want to give this to our users, all we have to do is take this build folder and host it somewhere. All of our users will be directed to index.html. React will load that site and send our users on their way. The other thing we can do is yarn test, clear yarn test, and this will run our test for us. We can say A to run all tests and notice that it runs the tests one past, one past here, and we can press uh, w to show more. We can use Q to quit. I won't go into testing too much. We'll talk about that in a future post. But if we come over here and we go to source app.test.js, it basically, it rendered without crashing right here. And that test passed. Everything is looking good. We can deploy our application wherever we need to. All right, I think that wraps it up for Create React App. A lot of great tools built into this and we can use it to build out our React applications from small to large. I definitely recommend checking out the actual docs to kind of read through and see what you can talk about and do. So yeah, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you in the next one.